and then we'll have a look at some custom applications uh, which were developed during the pandemic for uh, specific use cases so we'll have a session on that and then to close the session today we'll have a presentation on the next upcoming academy and how you can make best use of the academy calendar and uh, the community of practice so uh, we have a slight adjustment in the agenda so we'll start with the session on uh, <clears throat> custom apps first and then we'll proceed towards the the program indicators and the um, academy and the next steps presentation okay i'll proceed towards sharing my screen and uh, starting with the presentation So the learning objectives of the session on custom apps is to understand how custom apps can support a tracker implementation. Uh, we'll have a look at uh, the relationship uh, tracing app, which was developed in collaboration between his Sri Lanka and the University of Oxford uh, for mapping relationships between the contacts and the index cases for COVID-19. And then many his groups worked on uh, developing applications for COVID-19 certificates uh, and COVID-19 health passes. We'll see one such example on how you can plug external apps to your existing tracker implementations and can generate the required outputs from these custom applications. So uh, up till now, we have discussed the various outputs that can be made when working with tracker data. So we have seen how you can generate your event reports, how you can do the charting of the data and event visualizer, especially when you have your data elements with different option sets. And then we've also seen uh, how you can plot the tracker data on maps using track identity layer and the events layer. Uh, today, we'll also see the program indicator function, how that can be used in data visualizer and maps to complete the set of outputs that you can produce uh, using the uh, default apps available in DHIS2. But there are many instances and use cases where these tools uh, might not meet our requirements. In these cases, we develop custom applications to meet the specific needs of an implementation. <clears throat> so why these custom apps are uh, uh, kind of the, the cons they offer is that they allow you to use all the data stored within DHIS2 and you can create custom outputs or interfaces based on your own requirements. So there is a kind of an uh, advancement that you can carry out using external web apps, which can be plugged on your databases. And whatever outputs the system cannot produce by default, those can be produced through the use of custom applications. So many his groups work with different countries where they were using DHIS2 for their COVID-19 surveillance and COVID-19 vaccine registration registrations as well. So there they produced these COVID-19 certificates. So one of the examples was in Vanuatu where they wanted to generate a COVID certificate directly from the tracker capture application. So this was something which is not available by default, but uh, custom changes were made to the tracker capture application to generate the vaccination certificate right at the point of data entry. Similarly, uh, in uh, Western Central Africa, a specific application was developed to get the outputs from the uh, vaccination system to generate these uh, travel passes or uh, vaccination cards, giving the details of the person and the vaccinations uh, he or she has taken till date. So these are some examples on how custom maps were developed to produce these outputs for uh, COVID-19 uh, certificates. Then relationship analysis were very important to understand the uh, dynamics of how COVID-19 was spreading from one single index case to its potential contacts. So then there were a few apps developed using uh, either tracker APIs or uh, external uh, statistical tools such as R were also used to develop these applications. And then you could carry out a customized analysis based on the requirements through these external web apps. 
So we'll be talking about the COVID-19 relationships app today, which was developed by the Sri Lanka team, where they were able to create a diagram where they were able to see the potent the index cases which had registered as positive COVID-19 cases. And then all the contacts which are established with that respective index case, they were shown in this hub spoke model. So there you see these uh, blue dots are basically the index case and the purple dots in the extension show the relationship with the contacts so the larger the number of contacts were seen for an individual the greater the the radius of the circle was so uh, this way uh, this app was developed and we'll see a couple of examples and then you can also try on uh, during the exercise using the learner's guide <clears throat> Then in different countries, there were different requirements from the epidemiological team in terms of getting more information on the COVID-19 relationship model. So similar uh, app was developed in Lao where uh, they were using the kind of same mechanism, but the interface was different and customized as per the country requirements. So the local his group responsible and working with that country did develop another app where you could do contact tracing, you could link the index case with different contacts and then see which contacts are linked to the index case and how many contacts are linked. So these are all examples where you could use the tracker data in different interfaces, which may, which may not be available as part of DHIS2 default uh, feature set, but they can be developed on top of uh, your implementation and can help you in doing more advanced analysis. This is another example of a dashboard where uh, the default dashboard was not uh, fulfilling all the requirements. So uh, dashboard apps were also developed by different his groups where they pulled all the tracker data through the API and then uh, were able to plot that data using their own custom visualizations as they uh, wanted to do it. And these dashboard apps are also developed where custom dashboards were designed to, to meet the requirements of uh, the analysis which the Ministry of Health had. So this is one other example of a customized dashboard where you could see the data uh, in a different format as compared to a default DHS dashboard. So uh, these uh, dashboard apps were also developed. Okay, so now we've gone through the presentation. So we'll uh, have a look at one of the uh, examples of the COVID-19 uh, application, the custom applications which were developed. So we have a specific uh, instance shared for this example. So I'll put the uh, link in the chat box. So the username and password are given on the landing page. So you can use that. So basically in this uh, instance, we'll have a look at the relationship tracing app. So if you go to the apps menu, you'll see relationship tracing. Once you click on that, it will show you a saved visualization, which was created for the index cases and contacts. And you could also add a new visualization from here. So let's review the existing visualization that we had. So this visualization was mapping the index cases with their respective contacts. So once you click on the visualization, it will ask for the enrollment dates. So, so as to pull data for tracker enrollments, which happened between the enrollment start date and enrollment uh, end date. So the data which is available in uh, the database is for uh, March 2020 from 16th March to 18th March. So please select the same dates so that you can see the outputs that uh, that can be produced using this app. So I select 16 to 18. So now it will download all the enrollments which happened in the case-based surveillance program and also the data for relationships which were created as part of the contact tracing program. So the contact registration follow-up program and the case-based surveillance programs, as we saw, were linked together. So then these, uh, these data from these two programs were pulled together and the relationships that were established in the program in data entry, they were used to create a hub and spoke model to see how many contacts are there per index case and uh, how they link together. So if you click on the blue uh, circle, you will see the details of the index case which was further linked to the different contacts which were 
uh, which were added uh, for, as potential uh, suspected cases for this respective index case. So for each uh, blue circle, if you click on it, you'll see the potential, the index case, which is added. And if you click on the small circle, the purple circle, you'll see the person who was identified as a contact and was registered into the COVID-19 contact registration and follow-up program. So through this, you were able to see that potentially, uh, if you see here that there were 37 cases uh, which were identified during this period and there were 58 contacts. So potentially every index case had around more than one contact so you could do this sort of analysis and see what's the proportion in terms of the spread of the disease uh, when compared to an index, how many individuals this uh, is the, the, are getting COVID-19 through their index cases. If we wanted to do further uh, investigation on the data that has been captured, you click on the blue icon and you can also open the record and tracker capture. So you click on the blue circle and uh, you see the record if you need more information you click on open in tracker capture and the uh, the record will open for the index case you could see the relationships which are added for this respective person and the data which has been added so this way the custom map was linked to the existing tracker capture records so via the api they were able to pull the data on interface on a customized interface and uh, and were able to map the data from two programs and able to link the uh, records again with the diagram which was getting generated through the visualization okay <coughs> So another example that we have, so the username and password for this instance is available on the landing page. So if you log out, you will see the username and password. So you can log in using these details, which are given here. So similarly, we had uh, another application which was uh, developed by the Western Central Africa group. So this is available on your exercise instance. This is the COVID pass that they had developed. Um, this one. So here, this is in French because that was predominantly made for French speaking African countries. But in your browser, it will show you the translation options. You can select English from here. So it will translate the, the language into English. Here, the idea was that uh, we could generate a, a, a COVID-19 certificate or vaccine certificate or a travel pass for an individual through the national ID of that respective person. So we have a, a national ID which we can use to generate the information for. So I'll put that ID 2198323 and click on the search button. So if there was a record in the system which was matching this national identifier, then automatically the information for this respective patient uh, gets pulled into the, the placeholders and the record gets filled on the demographics that were captured during the COVID vaccine registry program. There is a QR code which has this information embedded as well. So it could be scanned on a device and the information can be further verified. And then you had the information for the vaccine doses which were given to this respective individual on what date the dose one was given and what date dose two was given which vaccine was given and the details for batch numbers and expiration date and where the vaccination uh, was done for this respective person so the qr code which is shown here it has the following information the first name surname sex the name of vaccine and dates of the doses now the information to the qr code is dependent upon what information uh, the ministry decides to show as part of the verification process. So they were able to decide uh, the information that they wanted to do. Um, now, they, the only uh, consideration point here is that um, this health pass was made for internal use only within the country. But during the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw that many international schemas were introduced for COVID-19 vaccination certificate generation by the WHO and the European Union. So many countries used those um, international schemas as well to facilitate the international travel between different countries. 
So <clears throat> depending upon the requirements that the ministry has in terms of producing these certificates, whether these are for internal consumption for movement within the country, but if they are for international uh, consumption and utilization, then uh, we could also consider utilizing these international schemas of uh, uh, these vaccine certificate generation, their content and their verification process uh, as well. So these schemas were tested in a couple of countries. Uh, in Laos, they did a certificate which was compliant to the EU regulations. So that was something which they did for the um, for the Lao COVID-19 vaccine registry. So, um, so these were the couple of examples we wanted to discuss to um, show what additional things you could do with support of a development agency or his group who is working in your country and can support your existing implementations by developing these uh, custom uh, applications. So what we can do is we have uh, around 10, 15 minutes. We can quickly review both the applications on uh, and use the, the uh, information given in the learner's guide. So there are two instances you can use. One is for relationships. If you want to see the relationship analysis app, uh, which was done by the Sri Lanka team, you could use the relationship instance. The details are just put on the chat so you can access the app using that. And the COVID-19 certificate app is available on your exercise instance. So you can use the exercise instance which you have been using for uh, reviewing the, the application. So I'll just put the link for that again. And the username and password you already are aware, but I'll just put it for convenience so you can use this. So uh, please take 10 minutes and then review both the applications. In case there are any questions, uh, we could uh, continue with that after you do the exercises. And if not, then we can proceed towards the, the next session uh, on the agenda. Uh, can I get your good name, please? Yeah, uh, this is Saurabh. Uh, Saurabh, uh, may I ask one question regarding that uh, back end of the uh, custom app development? Uh, how can we uh, get the API from uh, this uh, DHIS2? So DHIS2 has its sets of APIs which are introduced uh, uh, on the about page. So you have this web API uh, browser tool available here. So it has the APIs for the metadata and in the data objects. So it will need some background for the developer to know uh how the uh dhis2 api and the backend and native database structure operates based on that uh, past understanding they can develop these apis and then can pull data into the different uh applications yeah. how can we get that uh, background information about the api and their metadata i mean uh, metadata different from so, one to other instances indeed yeah so uh under the scope of this academy, we're not covering the development. That's system. right. From where we, should we get it then? We do have the past app development courses, which have been carried out in the past, the app development academies. We mm -hmm. can search for the YouTube channel links where the code, the sessions were hosted. So we can share that with you. So you can okay. review the app development course and you'll get uh, much more information on this from that yeah. course. Uh, thank you very much. Please send me the link on the YouTube and also yeah. if there's any opportunity for back in the development i was uh, i have another question if uh, that uh, dhis2 version change should we ch uh, change the that's mean it's change the api also uh, so there are no major changes in the apis the, the idea is to maintain continuity as much as possible but uh, in, in a scenario where you where any api related changes are made then the documentation is shared as part of the version release notes so ideally when we do the version updation we make sure that we test the applications again to ensure that nothing has uh, uh, nothing has been affected by the version upgrade so in in ideal scenario, these breaks do not happen, but if anything new has been introduced by the global team, then they make part of the release documentation and the developers can have a look at that and make necessary changes in the applications that they have developed. Okay, but there's another small one. Once we develop those uh, Android app or something outside, it should be uh, hosted within the 
DHS2 instance, so it can be separately work uh, uh, in different places. So the web apps which you want to use uh, on top of your DHS2 database, they have to be installed on the DHS2 instance. So like, for example, these apps are installed on a DHS2 database because then only they'll be able to interact with the database and uh, uh, get the required information. The Android apps, if you're developing Android application, which are custom, of course, they can be hosted on Google Play Store, but then they need to have the necessary URL and the credentials to access the DHS2 database through APIs and then show information on the custom interface for Android. So. Uh, for the web apps, they need to be part of the web instance. For the Android applications, they need to be just linked up with the DHS2 database through the URL and the username and the password. Okay, thank you. Thank you.